Welcome to episode five of Living a French Life. Buying a house is a huge investment, and buying an old house comes with its own set of challenges. One of the challenges to watch out for in an old house is the foundation. Foundation's job is to support the entire weight of the house, the floors, the walls, and the roof. If the foundation's not up to the job, whether because of poor craftsmanship, poor materials, or even just age, then it's something that's going to need to be addressed. Our massive 400-year-old oak beam has stood the test of time, but now it might need a little help. <laughs> or maybe to retire. So, what did you watch out for? The most obvious place to look for structural issues is in the floors and supports. Uneven floors or crumbling supports can indicate serious problems with your foundation. We, we have uneven floors. Yeah. Also, look closely at doors and windows. Are there gaps around the, the openings? We have, we have gaps around. <laughs> Do they operate properly? Do they open and close the way they should? If a doors and windows don't operate, it can indicate that something is seriously out of skew. And that's something that you're going to need to put some labor into and some money. And of course, cracks in the wall. They can indicate serious problems. So what's causing the crack? Is the wall moving? Is it still moving? How fast is it moving? Can you stop it? The answer to these things is yes. Yes, yes you can. <laughs> You know, one of the things that can cause foundation issues are trees. They're beautiful to have near your home, but their root systems can grow rapidly and they can undermine your foundation. So you have to be careful about where you position your trees. Poor drainage can also cause problems, causing contraction and expansion in the soil and moving the foundation. It can even cause the foundation to sink. Wind, weather, Ground tremors, if you're in earthquake territory, can also be a problem. So you're definitely going to want to get the advice of a professional. An engineer might cost a little bit, but he'll help you do your homework and know exactly what those repairs could cost. And in the end, it might provide a lower purchase price. And so you have to do the homework and make sure it's the right purchase for you. In our case, we know we need to stabilize our walls. And we're going to do that using a system of tie rods and clay de tiron to kind of hold the wall where it's supposed to be. And we are just a one design decision away from getting started on that project, aren't we, Karen? Yes, yes we are. <laughs> and a gentleman in Lille in the northeast corner of France is gonna help us out with that because he just might have those four clay de tiron I've been looking for. Up next, we're gonna start work on our foundation. And then we're going to make a visit to one of our favorite medieval villages. Make sure you watch to the end because at the end of our videos, you'll find some of our funny outtakes. Yes, they're in all the videos, so make sure you go back and watch them all. Change plans. Uh, things have progressed a little bit. Uh, so today I'm going to start digging out the floor of the cave. I think we mentioned that uh, there seems to be a lot of dirt on here, but that there's supposed to be a stone floor underneath it. Um, we need to dig that out to put in the pier that is going to hold up the steel that we're going to be putting in to replace the beams. Uh, so a lot of hand digging for this one. We're going to have a big power tool later too. All right, so we got a string in here, kind of measured off of where we want this thing. Uh, I got us kind of started on where it's going to be, but we're going to bring in the big gun now and do some serious digging. Oh, 
Now, this hole, this is about 40 centimeters deep. It's about uh, 90 centimeters long and about uh, 70 centimeters wide. We're gonna throw some steel in here and then when we do the concrete, this will last longer than the house. The first thing we have to do is set this fantastic metal cage of reinforcing steel into the hole that is going to hold our concrete, which is going to support the column, which is going to support the house. Ooh. <laughs> How many bags do you have to do? Six. That's one. Yeah. This thing is heavy. Yeah. Okay. Flip it over. Yeah, you got it. Come on, you go. <laughs> You're doing great, honey. Well, I don't want to get it on the ground. Okay. No, you don't want to get it on the ground. There you go. Hey, there gotta put some muscle go. into it. That's right. All right. All right. All right. Very good. Super. No stones. Okay. Kind of chop it into the water. So that way you're getting the mix, you know? Get over here where you have most of the water. Get in here, Rob. Thank <laughs> you. All right. Pretty good, honey. Get a little bit, little dry spot over in here. Make sure you chop it all in there. There you go. But those dry spots will be a weak spot. In, so, the, in the in the finished concrete. I see. Oh, that makes sense. Most important part of doing concrete. <laughs> All right. Clean up the tool. If you do it right when you're done, it is really easy. French poet and founder of the Surrealist movement, André Breton, said of Saint-Cyr La Popie, Here, I've ceased wishing myself elsewhere. One visit, and you will understand why so many artists and writers escaped Paris and came to Saint-Cyr in the 19th and 20th centuries, and why it's one of mine and Tim's favorites. Perched on top of magnificent limestone cliffs overlooking the valley du Lac, Saint-Cyr La Popie was voted France's favorite village in the entire country in 2012. It boasts 13 historic monuments within its small footprint, so be sure to stop by the tourist office at the base of the Chateau Ruin. You can get a free map of the town and ensure that you don't miss a one. Stone buildings with steep sloped tiled roofs dating back to the 12th century line narrow cobblestone streets shaped by history. Many are columbage, or half-timbered houses designed to maximize square footage and minimize taxes since only the ground floor is counted. 
There are countless little courtyards and terraced gardens that add to the village's charm. This was an artisan village. Carvers, tanners, and coppersmiths still make their wares in the village. It was an extremely busy town in the medieval period given its location on the Lot River. It's also an important stop on the pilgrimage route to Santiago de Compostela in Spain. It was also the home to three important lords, the La Popi, the Carlac, and the Gordon families. Each built a fortress at the very top of the town. Today, there's little left of these chateaux, but you can still feel a great sense of history as you walk the ruins. Plus, the views at the top are superb. The 15th century church standing on the rocky outcrop towers over the village. Much of the surrounding Lot Valley is worth exploring. There are several hiking trails carved into the banks of the river that connect saint cyr la popie with other beautiful villages, and it's possible to take a boat ride down the lot. From the river, you have a different perspective of the high limestone cliffs marked with layers of colorful sediments on their facade. Be sure to watch for the Chateau de Anglais, 11th century fortress cut into the cliff. It served to keep watch and observe the river and could be used as a refuge for the local inhabitants whenever there was flooding or enemy attacks. The high season of July and August will find the small village overrun during the day. For a real treat, I suggest coming in September, near the end of the day. The village is magical at dusk, plus you'll have the entire place to yourself. on this episode, I found myself thinking of the 1986 film, uh, The Money Pit, with Tom Hanks and Shelley Long. Yeah. Uh, it's about a house renovation that goes extremely off the rails. But the kind of the point of the whole movie was that, like in relationships, if the foundation is strong, everything else can be fixed. <laughs> Anyhow... The next time, the Tyrone. Yes. Really. Really. So if you please like, subscribe, and make sure to stick around through the end credits. For the bloopers. They're funny. And they're in all the videos, so go back and watch them all. We'll see you next time here on Living a French Life. A tout à l'heure. It's Sunday morning, and the sky is blue. I got forever with you. All right, uh, so we do the welcome. So. Welcome to episode five of Living a French Life. And I'm about to fly. Oh, God. Intro music. We did that. Yeah, well, we're going to do that again. Okay. Because that was that good. That was that good? <laughs> I thought it was good. <laughs> welcome, welcome to episode five. Sorry, again. I was making a face. Okay. <laughs> welcome to episode five of Living a French Life. It's a new day for me and you. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to do that. I don't know. <laughs> Want to do it again? Welcome to episode Sorry, five. Sorry, I would make a face. Okay. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. No, stop. <laughs> <laughs>